when many electrons and holes are excited in the semiconductor via electrical and optical pathways. The electronic properties of the material change. The three main dominant effects here, such as the band filling or band gap shrinkage and free carrier absorption. When the density of excited carriers is sufficiently high, the change in refractive index will be large enough to produce a measurable change in reflectivity. And so if we can measure the excitation and relaxation of carriers by measuring the reflectivity of the sample itself. In solids, there are a limited number of states at any given energy. When large amounts of carriers are excited to some range of energies, the limited number of states will fill, therefore making the optical transition to that energy impossible. This is what we call band filling. So the absorptivity goes down at that energy. This change in absorptivity may be linked to the change in the refractive index through the Kramer's chronic intervals. In band gap shrinkage, injected electrons will occupy the bottom of the conduction band. And if the density is sufficiently high, electrons will interact through poly principle and coulombic potential. This interaction will lower the electron's energies and reduce the energy of the conduction band edge. And the similar thing happens to the holes, raising the valence band edge and energy. The result is a shrinkage of the band gap, which modifies the absorptivity and therefore the refractive index. Once again, through Kramer's chronic intervals. In free carrier absorption, when a photon excites an electron into the conduction band, the electron is still able to move on deeper into the conduction band with the absorption of more photons. With high carrier densities, large numbers of free electrons may be excited high into the conduction band, and large numbers of holes can be excited deep into the valence band. The net result is a reduction of the refractive index.